Next up is Matt Griswold. He'll uh, uh, share some information on an open source project he's been working on to uh, deploy stuff towards network devices. Matt, the floor is yours. Hi, I am actually really bad at releasing open source software, so I figured if I had a deadline, I'd get it done, and I did this morning. So the first one is Engage. It's basically a culmination of various tools I've used internally for both my internet exchange and clients that have SDN setups. Uh, when it first started, when I first started doing network automation, it was generally driven by clients, which is always time limited. So I would just fork it and do features as needed without interfering with anything else. And as time went on, it kind of just got to be where it was just duplicated code. So this is like a dedupe process and open source at the same time. <clears throat> Basic usage is very much like Junos. So as you can see, it's just um, pushes and pulls files, commit, et cetera. The reason I have it like this, it started actually as an Ansible plugin, and I wanted to use it outside of Ansible. I'm a very big proponent of the Unix philosophy, which is like do one thing and do it correctly. So this is aims to do that. For example, of using it in different spots, for the internet exchange, when we get a new piece of hardware in, that's completely done by Ansible and then you push the initial config with engage. We also MacLock ports. So if a customer wants to change a router, they have to log into our portal and update their new MAC address. This updates the database, which builds a config and again calls engage. And the same thing with BGP-driven events. So we have a layer two ACL set up. So customers can tag it with 666 and it'll actually drop that traffic just to their MAC address on the whole fabric and it's all using the same engage to push it. Uh, the one major feature that isn't out yet, or isn't merged into this release yet, is logging. So one of the biggest things with the United IX is anytime it happens, it generates a log, it generates a log of the diff, and if something bad happens, we can exactly see what happened in a timely manner. Um, these are all the common options, fairly common stuff for any Unix command. The one interesting thing is Home is where it gets all its config files from. It's designed to look in the current working directory so you can function out, out of a, a Git repo, which is how it's always used, by me at least. Uh, connection options, again, same thing. If auth fails, it prompts for a password, so the first time you get a machine, as I have an example here, you push the config, it uploads all the SSH keys, and you never have to deal with a password again. Um, push again. Much like Junos, check, commit, diff, lock. I'm trying to go extra fast here, so you can obviously download this and look later. Plus, I assume most of you are familiar with how that works. Same with pull. There's single utility functions for doing commits and rollbacks on the command line. So generally, like when you're building a fabric, lots of people will go directly on the device and do changes. I don't like doing that, so I will pull a full config down, check it into a Git repo, and then edit it with VI and use this as an interface. I found it work, works really well and you keep a log of everything you're doing. Um, I use this such as in Ansible when you generate files, each snippet, as I call them, gets put into an output directory named with a host name. So I just included a couple of scripts here for an example to see how I use it. So it, essentially it just takes, a, these commands take the single host, host name and do whatever you, you tell it to. Device support, Juno supports everything. It's also been ported to Napalm. Napalm supports, I wanna say, 10 or 15 different OSs. Napalm does not support a pull config, so none of that stuff works. It'll throw a not implemented error, but for pushing, it all works fine. Up next, as I said, this is, still has quite a few things from other internal projects to be merged in. The logging's probably next. Bird will be after that, because we do a lot with Bird. And I'm always open for patches. The next thing is vaping, which actually I wrote over a year ago, I think, when I was frustrated with smoke pen because I really hate Perl. And <laughs> I do everything from Ansible. So for me, Perl is a bunch of one-offs, and I don't want to just log on to the machine and do it, so I end up building stuff. And I was short on time and decided, you know, I could probably build this faster than I could get Perl working. <laughs> and between me and my 
partner, he did the front end, I did the back end, and we did get it working in about five hours from start to finish, so we're pretty happy with that. And then it sat there unreleased until I did this talk. So there's a real-time demo if you want to look at it. It's essentially, it's a green I.O. framework, so it uses G event currently. This is abstracted away, so the user doesn't really care what it's done in. You can basically treat it like it's a single-threaded application, and vaping will thread it for you somewhat intelligently. Everything's a plugin, and you can look at the code. So I've actually used this framework for lots of other things that have nothing to do with network monitoring just because, it, like I said, it's so easy to write code that does good I.O. multiplexing. The current plugins that we released are fping, which is just like smoke pings, pings multiple hosts, command, which will run any command. It currently only takes JSON. And as an interesting note, I was starting to write an SNMP getter for this and pretty much hate SNMP as much as Perl. So I started playing around with the display JSON and the new Junos releases, and this was 10 times faster than SNMP. So it went from what I was considering to just be a ghetto hack to this actually might be the better way to do it. it uses zero MQ to distribute, because this can obviously be run on multiple hosts. And then we have a standalone web server called Vodka that will, if you just want to start this up and play with it, it'll serve the graphs out of. Configuration is all YAML. Everything is, supports inheritance. So name, as you'll see, the type and name are pretty much interchangeable. So type fping is a plugin, that's Python code. And then you define another class, essentially, with standard fping. Say every three seconds, you want to ping 10 times. And then if you want to do 20, as you can see, it inherits. Changes the count, the interval will remain the same. So you can do different things without repeating yourself a lot. Produces a pretty graph, which can't really see on there, it's fine. And if more plugins coming, I want to port it to Python 3 for async IO, and again, patches are welcome. I think that's it. I don't know how I'm doing for time. Fast? It's more time for large BGP. So, so you put this on, on GitHub, it's for all to fetch. Now what? What is the best way to have a community engage in, in your project and make Lot, it better? Lots of presentations. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions for Matt so far? Not even about the SNMP that's being slower than SSH? Because I think that's crazy. What, what was the time difference? Oh, I don't remember. I have the results someplace. It was using uh, reuse connections, so it takes most of the SSH out of it. But. So you're reinventing screen scraping in a modern era? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Matt.